Uh, and I think we were talking about it a minute ago, just they did such a good job, you know, finding, dueling, you know, like he, he's just got ice water. And, you know, his range, even with a guy flying at him, is just his poise and range is just tremendous. And, you yeah, know, I mean, obviously the team shoots 40% from three. They're eighth in the country and shooting the three. And we obviously spent a lot of time talking about that. And we knew we were going to have to just single cover Boken and Zide because, you know, like you can't let them go on a run. I mean, they average eight made threes a game. And we talked about the fact that we needed to, you know, make it an ugly defensive game because we're not, you know, that execution finesse team just knocking down plays. I mean, they're a phenomenal, you know, phenomenally well coached, phenomenally unselfish group of guys. They're able to spread the floor. They want to make extra passes. And they probe your defense because if they can't get it to Boken, they'll skip give another, and then drive it, and then find that open guy so they keep on a string. So we we had to really work hard <coughs> to um, be in a position where we could play four light players so we could just switch everything, which was, I think, probably the, the, the difference in the game was not having to, you know, over-pursue out of the, the ball screen situations. It, it's interesting because, mm -hmm. to me, they're, they're a lot like the NESCAC schools we play. And like MIT, but they shoot it better. You know, MIT is really long, they have a bouncy forward, and then they have a big who is just so hard and he gets deep post touches, but they don't shoot as well. But like you, like when you play Amherst, it's gotta be single coverage in the post, and they take 33s a game, you know? So if they're making threes, especially transition, like you guys are not as much, Scranton's not as much of a run team as they are an execution team, whereas Amherst, they get up more shots and more threes, and they're just going to try and outscore you. So I think that you know our schedule is kind of set up that way, where you know we're playing Amherst and Tufts and you know Bates, and you know we we're four and one in Escac this year. You know, <laughs> so uh, we got us a playoff spot. But, um, but it's one of those things where those games I think prepare us for league play because our league play we got three teams in the top ten defensively, so we know how to grind it out. Because if you don't, you're going to get ground out. He is the ultimate glue guy. Okay, um, Eric doesn't get all the press that you know Flannery and Wiki get, and um, I understand that because statistics sell newspapers, right? <laughs> they used to. Um, but it's a situation where you can't put a price or value on toughness, and Eric's one of the two toughest kids I've ever coached in my 25 years. Okay, and what his toughness comes down to is he's willing to do the right thing almost always on defense, okay? And his ability to just lock in <coughs> and guard whoever we have to play against off the bounce, because, you know, that's obviously an issue for us, you know? Um, so I, I think that, you know, we would be nowhere without his toughness, his leadership, his character, and, and what he demands of everybody else in the weight room, on the practice court, and, you know, like, he, you know, these guys want to keep going. They were here at 8 a.m. today. You know, after a game last night, most college kids are in the racket eating. You know? So I think that Eric's character, toughness, and leadership, you, you just can't put a price on that in the box score. But, you know, like, he just keeps coming. You know, he never gives in. And, look, I mean, guys make shots, and he still does the right thing. You know, and that's what we talk about is the DNA of a champion is that you keep doing the right thing no matter what just happened in the last play. Well, yeah, obviously Joey would get a lot of attention from defenses. Um, and, you know, for me it's just – Taking my spots and taking the defense, giving me, taking the opportunities that are presented to me. Um, I, offensively, I really try to try not to force things. Kind of just take what I can in the flow of the offense. Um, you know, and us, we're still successful in transition. So, and get out in transition. You know, that's why we focus so much on defense, and that's why um, defense is really my uh, my priority as far as you know locking down. I usually pride myself in guarding the opposing team's best player. Um, you know, and that's usually every night I do that. For almost 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, minutes. Um, so, you know, I, I, again, you know, just it starts with defense and getting out in transition. And, you know, that's why we get a lot of our opportunities. But, um, yeah, like I said, I just pride myself, you know, in, in stopping the opponent's best player and offense just kind of you know, choosing spots and taking the defense gives me. Down a little it was bit. definitely a war. Uh, a lot like last night for us, too. Two different types of game flows. But, uh, We've um, we've battled through different types of games all year, and uh, we've been we're a team that's been prepared with great scouting and um, tribute to our coaching staff and just uh, willingness of our players to to read the scout, to watch the game film, and just to prepare for the next opponent. Uh, well, <coughs> he's very talented. Um, 
he obviously gave us trouble down low. When he gets position in the paint, it's he can go left and right, and he's just he's a, he's a talent. And uh, he gave us trouble, but luckily we were able to come out on top. So that's all that matters. Yeah, I mean, you just kind of kind of stay composed. Um, you can't let the foul trouble get to you. Just gotta continue to play your game. Can't let it affect how you play and your intensity. And um, you know, obviously Dave got a few quick ones early on and prevented him playing long bench, which, which hurt us down low. But we had some guys come off the bench and you know give us huge minutes and really um, you know step up and play a big role for us. Um, but yeah, you just can't let it get to you. you just gotta keep playing your game. And, um, you know, tonight thankfully we didn't get all five, but mm -hmm. we felt. Last year we, we left a lot on the floor uh, getting scored and it definitely left a bad taste in our mouth and it provided us with a lot of motivation in the spring, the summer and in the fall to prepare for this year. And um, we have guys that all want to be in the gym, all want to be here and put the time in and I, it's been a tribute to that for our success this year. And We knew we had lofty year goals in last year of just getting to the tournament and luckily we've we made it done so far and we just want to keep playing as a group. I didn't look at any Scranton or Baruch film till today. You know, like we, you know, I, I always uh, weave Ellie and James into these discussions. I have two and a half year old twins, and uh, they force me to be one day at a time. Um, and I think it actually helps a ton because, you know, we have, you know, Sean Bird, my assistant, our full time assistant, does a phenomenal job getting us ready. And then I get to kind of, you know, really look, watch a couple games today. But, you know, like we've seen. Everything you could possibly see. I mean, during the course of the year, at this point. <laughs> in terms of the size, you know, the, the the different zones. I mean, these guys played a great matchup today, and you know. But I, I think the biggest thing for us in terms of preparation is we got to keep burning and do what we do. You know, like we play a specific way, and we play to our strengths. You know, and so for us, you know, the big question is whether we're going to get these guys two days off Sunday, Monday, or not, because you know these guys got a lot of miles on them. You know. And it's one of those things where they're playing big minutes and energy and poise and experience is much more than the hours in the gym at this point in the year. And so we seen ball screen after ball screen after ball screen and something that's all we've worked on at the end of the year because it's every run it, you know. So I, I just feel like in terms of preparation, you know, we'll spend Monday and Tuesday just getting back into the gym, feeling good, trying to forget this all occurred, you know, because like, you know, it's it's another tournament next weekend, you know, you got to try and win two games next weekend, and, you know, I think we've now had four dress rehearsals for next sure. week, you know, so I'm hopeful that everybody's excited and wants to keep playing, and that, you know, we have really specific goals based on last year's, you know, I would say disappointment that you addressed earlier. And we have a really good leadership group that we talked about it last spring, and, and these guys really did a great action plan, and they've continued to do so. And you know that's the big thing right now is energy, rest, and focus. You know, and if you can do those things, great things can happen because these guys are all willing to put it on the table for each other. Yeah. Well, I mean, our student section has been absolutely phenomenal the last two days. Um, you know, I, we personally as a team, we can't thank them enough for all they did for us. Um, you know, they really rallied us back from the 10 point deficit in the second half yesterday. Um, but hopefully these stains come out. They, they were, <laughs> it was, it was it's not a good answer. <laughs> so, um, but no, it was, it was a phenomenal feeling and you know, certainly just our, our last time playing at home, there's no better way to go out than an atmosphere like that. So.